So this idea of change. Uh, this is a great quote by Eric Hoffer, who was a longshoreman, migrant worker, and philosopher in San Francisco. And he was quite well known in the 60s and 70s. And he says that in times of change, learners inherit the world, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. <laughs> It's like we see it all around us. The world is undergoing foundational shifts, social, economic, political, cultural. And uh, as educators, we're supposed to be preparing your sons and daughters for the future. And if we just look at a brief thumbnail sketch, the modern school was designed to meet the social and economic needs of industrialism. And the social and economic needs of today's world are vastly different from industrial revolution. And when your sons and daughters are ready for the workforce, it's going to be light years ahead. So although we can't really accurately forecast what the world's going to look like in terms of the social and economic fabric, it's pretty safe to say that their tools will be digital. And so here's an example of a tool. Some of you might remember it. I think I actually used this maybe in the beginning of elementary school, a slide rule. And uh, interestingly enough, this actually generated controversy when it was first introduced because people were worried that you know people with long division and multiplication in your in your head would actually go out the window. Well, now it's obsolete. And but I sort of use this as an example that our anxiety around some of this change can be a result of trying to do today solve today's problems with yesterday's tools and yesterday's concepts. In today's world, it's not just new tools, but there's whole new modes of communication that are developing. Uh, there was a transition at one point in time uh, from oral to literate cultures. And, and we're going through something, I think, as substantial today. So when you transition from oral to literate cultures, and oral cultures, everything that you want to remember has to be memorized. And as a result of that, everything is tangibly rooted in the physical world. Everything you talk about has to be circled back again. There's no such thing as linear thought because it can't be remembered in any kind of adequate fashion. But with the advent of literacy, you begin to develop logic, linear thinking, and abstraction because literacy serves as a placeholder for memory, which allows the mind to expand into new directions. So this is going to require uh, new media literacies. Uh, which will rest on the foundations of traditional kinds of literacies, but traditional literacy is no longer solely sufficient. And there's a media scholar, Henry Jenkins, probably one of the most preeminent media scholars out there today, formerly from MIT, now at USC. And he said, traditionally, we wouldn't consider someone literate if they could read but not write. And in today's world, we shouldn't consider someone literate if they can consume but not produce media. So as a result, um, we're moving into a new media paradigm. In the past, an elite um, produced culture, and the masses consumed it. Yet now we're slowly in the process of moving to a place where the body politic has an active stake in the production of culture. So if we look at just the ratio of change from oral to literate cultures, from we can see all the cultural achievements from um, Plato's first writing, which is it's, it's sort of ironic that he was concerned about, uh, about literacy because he was concerned about the, the erosion of memory, and yet we know about Plato and his mentor Socrates through his writing. And so if we look at all that, Shakespeare, and we look at the Renaissance and the scientific revolution and all the remarkable achievements of the 20th century, that's largely a result of literacy, or at least being foundational. So if we can just extrapolate the ratio of change from literacy to this web-based technology, I think there's remarkable things in store, and that's why we feel so confident at San Domenico and excited of kind of fusing the past, the tradition, what's best about the past, and preparing future for uh, the future. So that's kind of the view from 50,000 feet as to why digital tools are, are important. Thank you.